Howdy folks, this here is B. Jr. from B. Jr.'s Movie Cave on the inaugural episode of B. Jr.'s Movie Cave podcast. That's right, getting into the podcast world a little bit. Don't really know just yet about the frequency of the podcast, going to lock that in at a later date. We're going to dive right in. We're going to secure my masculinity today. We're going to talk about some 80s action classics, and then I'll file, kind of cap it off, do a little nightcap, if you will, of uh, Machete. Uh, Blu-ray, going to go over that one today, but the 80s classics, first and foremost, we're going to talk about today is Extreme Prejudice, uh, early uh, Walter Hill or mid-80s action fare from one of my favorite action directors, Walter Hill, starring Nick Nolte in the lead role in Powers Booth, also Wanted Dead or Alive, starring Rutger Hauer, back when Rutger Hauer was uh, the 80s uh, star, you know, basically a lot of his main roles were during the early to mid-80s. And now I even hear tell he's coming back as a hobo with a shotgun. You have to Google that one. That one's off the wall exploitation stuff coming your way in the near future. Also going to do a uh, another one called Black Moon Rising, starring Tommy Lee Jones and a young Linda Hamilton. Um, basically, these are films that I watched growing up a lot during the uh, VHS boom of the 80s. It was... Uh, during this time that I watched a lot of classics that I added to the collection over the years and movies that I just basically never get tired of. These are ones that basically I have to uh, admit a lot of them are guilty pleasures. They're not really the most Oscar winning performances of a lot of people. They're basically good good eye and brain candy. Uh, coming up with the first, these are going to basically be mini reviews to kind of let you know a little bit about them. If you're in the market to own them or rent them, Netflix them, whatever way you can get your hands on them. First selection, of course, is Extreme Prejudice. Highly recommend, uh, if you have the means, pick up the Region 2 of this movie. Did an update on it recently, and uh, basically the reasons why is because you have an in-depth, hour-long uh, interview with Walter Hill. You also have an 80s vintage featurette and an original three, uh, theatrical trailer of the movie. It basically, in my opinion, is the best way to own it right now because we, for years we've been subjected by full screen laser disc port on DVD here in the U.S. by Artisan, I believe, who put it out. This one's put out by Optimum Home Entertainment Studio Canal. Uh, it's cleaned up, anamorphic widescreen. You know, hey, can't ask for a better presentation right now anyway. Uh, Extreme Prejudice is always one of those that just kind of got lost in the shuffle over the years. It didn't really hit its stride at the movie theaters, and I can't imagine why, because this was in the days of RoboCop, all the hyper-violent, uh, Red Heat, you know, uh, you know, all the Schwarzenegger flicks were coming out, like Predator and all these movies. Um, Stream Prejudice just kind of faded away into video history, and a lot of people like it, but it's usually a smaller cult following. Um, I don't I don't understand why, because this movie has got an all-star cast in it. I mean, you got Powers Booth, Nick Nolte, Marita Conchita Alonzo, uh, music by Jerry Goldsmith. Um, you've got uh, a, a great, I mean, it's just a huge supporting cast. You've got, uh, who else in here? you got Williams Forsyth in this movie. You've got uh, Rip Torn in a supporting role. You've got, uh, uh, you know, what's the guy's name there? It's in a lot of great flicks. Um, Michael Ironside, how can I forget that one? Uh, Michael Ironside, he's uh, one of the main guys in the movie as well. Clancy Brown, uh, who showed up from Highlander fame and other films. You know, the list goes on. It's even got Tiny Lister in it, or uh, Zeus, as he's known in the wrestling, wor the wrestling world. Um, he plays a supporting role in the movie as a henchman. I don't know. I just always, I always enjoyed the over-the-top action fare in this movie. It basically is a film that uh, should not go unnoticed. Um, it's got great action over-the-top acting, uh, highly underrated action fare. It's produced by legendary producer Buzz Fitzshans, who also produced uh, one of my action favorites, uh, First Blood with Stallone. Um, it's got great uh, uh, director of photography, Matthew Leonetti, in this one. Uh, it's pro executive produced by Mario Casar and Andrew, Andrew Vahena, who uh, was the Carol Co. company of the late 80s, early 90s that had all these great action and sci-fi action hits of that time frame. But anyway, I say pick it up, guys. If you're in the 80s action and you've never seen this movie, go out, rent it right now, Netflix it, 
you know, get it, get your hands on it any way you can. I highly recommend the Region 2 disc because you'll get the widescreen version of the film. Widescreen is the only way to go, guys. Next one on the docket today, where can I start, guys? This is one of those uh, New World Pictures, uh, New World Pictures back in the 80s. I mean, they had, like, comedies, they had action, they had horror, they had exploitation. It was the Roger Corman backed company that just, it was like the little engine that couldn't stop. The little engine that could, you know, it just kept on pressing on. Now, it lost its stride later and they kind of died out like a lot of the studios did, uh, like Orion and some of these other ones that were around that time, but they just went the way of the beast, you know, or reinvented themselves, I think, as New Horizons or whatever. But uh, this is one of those two where Rutger Hauer was hot during the day. He was doing action films, he was doing sci fi, he'd been in Blade Runner, Lady Hawk, you know, he'd been in a lot of films, uh, The Hitcher, a little horror entry for him. He was the, you know, the. The choice stake of the day, if you you know the mas the masculine dude you wanted in your movie, he was soft spoken. He was a Dutch guy. He had a little bit of mystery to him. Uh, he was a bigger actor too. He was, and a lot of people don't realize this. You know, you know height of actors is a big uh, misconception. Uh, I am not a big guy. I'm five eight, guys, and Tom Cruise is like five six. I mean, he's shorter than I am. But Rutger Hauer, I believe, is six foot six foot plus. So he's an imposing guy. He can do action. He could do a lot of stuff back in the day. Another notable uh, entry in this one, Wanted Dead or Alive, is uh, Gene Simmons of Kiss uh, Rock Group fame. Uh, he was, uh, during the 80s, early to mid 80s, he just woke up one day and was trying to diversify and he was doing all these villain henchman roles and trying to break into the acting scene before returning back to his rock roots. Um, I have to say, um, I give props to Gene Simmons every time when I watch this movie for taking on this role because if you don't know much about Gene Simmons, Gene Simmons is Israeli by birth and of the Jewish faith. I don't think he practices much uh, from interviews that I've seen him in. But basically, uh, Gene Simmons was playing a terrorist, you know, something that is like as far from his own nature as he could be. So he plays a terrorist in this movie against uh, Rutger Hauer's ex CIA bounty hunter character. Um, it's just a great little action movie. You don't have to expect a whole lot from it. It's not a high-budget movie, but they do a lot with the money that they had. This is back when uh, action was, like I said before, with Extreme Prejudice. It was, in, it was in its violence heyday. I mean, you could get away with a lot more, even though a lot of these were R-rated movies, but you could get a lot more over-the-top action movie, a lot more bang for your buck back then. You don't feel like you went away from the theaters, uh, at least when I was growing up when I watched a lot of these. And, you know, feeling like you wasted your money in any way. Uh, basically, the story rundown, he's an ex-CIA bounty hunter who's basically just trying to make a living by taking in the scum of society. Um, an old uh, adversary in the form of Gene Simmons uh, shows up in the U.S., starts bombing, and, try, you know, and there's a subplot, too, because there's, like, this rivalry between the two where they uh, had some dealings in the past, and that's kind of noted by the story here and there. And uh, Robert Guillaume of uh, TV's comedy show Benson fame is like a uh, ex-friend of uh, Rutger Hauer's character. And he kind of watches after him throughout the story and helps him along. Basically, it's about this cat and mouse game and action ensues about them uh, trying to elude one another and uh, the CIA subplot is in there too. I don't know, just a good little action romp. Don't expect much in the acting department. It's directed by the Gary Sherman who's had... Uh, Pretty good little career there running throughout the uh, 80s. and uh, I'm not too familiar with a lot of his works. I think he did a, a, a horror film by the name by the title of Dead and Buried, I believe it was. Haven't seen that one in years, though. But seek that one out if you want to see Gene Simmons in an early henchman role and a good starring role for uh, Rutger Hauer. He's kind of taking a lot of cues from Dirty Harry in this movie, but I highly recommend it. Uh, Black Moon Rising, guys. Uh, this one is another Roger Corman New World Pictures of the 80s, um, directed by Harley Coakless, who's directed a lot of action films and things of that nature throughout the uh, years, and I've always said it, I've always backed his films, he's a little known director, he's not widely talked about in a lot of circles, but the man can direct action like nobody's business, he does an apt job of, uh, kind of in the Roger Corman fare of making sure he does the you get the most bang for his buck and doing it on a lower budget type scale. Um, this movie has the reputation as from the mind of John Carpenter. It's even on the tagline of the disc there. 
or the uh, the DVD cover. Basically, it's it's a good little action movie, sort of in the same vein as Wanted Dead or Alive. It's not got your knock your socks off, uh, you know, budget uh, budget uh, like RoboCop or anything like that. But it's got just it's got it where it counts. It's got an early performance from uh, right before he really hit his main stride and got a lot of big acting roles was Tommy Lee Jones. Also, an early role. I think this one was uh, post Terminator before she got a big name for herself, and even uh, pre uh, Beauty and the Beast TV show from Linda Hamilton. That's right, guys. And uh, the lead uh, bad guy in the movie is basically Robert Vaughn of uh, Bullet fame and other. You know, he's just kind of a legendary Hollywood actor. Uh, turns in a good performance in this one too. Some other supporting roles go to Bubba Smith uh, from Police Academy fame. He played Hightower, you remember, and. Uh, Basically, uh, Lee Ving shows up in this one too as a kind of a subplot henchman. Um, the movie, the screenplay, and the story is based on a, or is basically from John Carpenter. He wrote the movie and, and gave the story idea, but the movie wasn't directed by him. And I've always defended that mainly because it's basically one of those where he just sold the story, the studio took it and made a movie out of it. That's great, but the movie still has that John Carpenter kind of leaning on the shoulder feel. He wasn't directly involved with this project or anything, but from what I've read, but he, uh, his uh, knack for 80s films showed up in this film. It's a totally, totally different direction style, action style to the movie, but the, just the kind of essence of John Carpenter is there. I've always defended that part of it. It's basically a story rundown. It's about uh, a character named Quint, Tommy Lee Jones. He's a... He's a uh, I think he's kind of he's kind of employed. He's a master thief employed by uh, FBI, CIA type folks, and does jobs for them to retrieve vital data. It's, it's kind of one of those uh, open-ended uh, background kind of deals. Uh, Linda Hamilton is kind of like another master car thief. Well, he hides some data in this one of those uh, high-tech prototype cars that they're like out in the desert being tested for speed. Uh, speed rates and things like that. It's like a hydrogen car, some kind of high-tech car, basically. And he hides his, this computer disk that he's stolen uh, and was going to give back to the FBI, I believe it was. He's hidden it in this car. Well, Linda Hamilton jumps up and steals the vehicle. She's like this car thief for this uh, crime ring mogul, Robert Vaughn. And uh, basically, uh, it's about him trying to retrieve the disk and starts up a love interest with Linda Hamilton who's having problems with Robert Vaughn as far as being her boss and you know hijinks and sue I don't want to ruin too much of the film but uh, I would probably try to seek this one out on region one if you can find it in widescreen the region two that I've got here is a uh, sad to report a full screen uh, version of the film although it looks and sounds great I do believe this film was fi filmed in widescreen not an open map format so there again seek it out guys rent it Netflix it see if it's your uh, cup of tea and then then do a, uh, a kind of a buying of the the film. I wouldn't run right out and just buy it, you know, arbitrarily or anything. So that has been your rundown on some '80s action flicks today, guys. I know it's a little light, but I'm trying to get my sea legs here, if you will, on the podcast scene. So I'm going to take a break for right now, get a cup of coffee, and I'll come back 